Hey everyone, this is Vicki Brown from Messy Table Studio. Welcome to my very first video. I wanted to do a flip through, didn't want to do really a put together project. I'm still trying to figure out the lighting and where exactly everything's supposed to be. See, you see this? <laughs> this is my, um, my goober aid <laughs> to show me where I'm supposed to be with the camera. So that's going to be there a little while until I figure out where everything's supposed to be. Okay, so what this flip through is about is about um, a squash book or it's called a map book, I think is what Carla said. Um, I'm, I'm the moderator during Carla's live, one of the moderators for Carla's live stream or Caged Fish Art Experiments um, on on YouTube and when she got done doing her live stream on Tuesday I could not wait to get back here in the studio and do exactly what she did on her video because I just thought it was an awesome project I have everybody knows that I like little tiny books because I have the attention span of a gnat um, and I like short, quick projects. I'm not prone to long-term, drawn-out things like people who are committed to doing year-long projects. Uh, that's not me. I made it through the ICAD project last year for 61 days and thought I was going to die. So um, this is more my speed. It's small. Little commitment of both time and effort. <laughs> That's exactly the kind of projects I am all about. All right, so she did her live stream. I came in here and I made the prototype. This is out of scrapbook paper that I had a bunch of. And I wanted to make it a temporary thing just because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. And I don't want to ruin, you know, a whole bunch of cardstock and everything before I decided that I really liked the project. So here it is. This is the squash book. The one that, you can see right here, that is Impatience at its premium. I got very excited about doing this, and when I did it, I got glue on it, or paint or something, and there's a strip, I think it's glue. Yeah, I had to glue it. I laid the little skinny piece back down over where it was, where they uh, glued on each other and stuck because I don't have a lot of patience. This is the three square method that she showed first for the, let me see, sorry. The three square method that she showed first, where you take three squares that are measured, I think it's like five or five and a half square, and then you fold them first, then you lay them down and one square, as you can see, is glued on top of the square of the next one, and then, this one's on the square of this one. So this middle square is where all the gluing is done on the ends. So anyway, um, I'm not going to show you exactly how to make the squash, the squash book. I'm going to give you the link to Carla's video, and then that way you can make it on your own. But be forewarned that you're going to be a little crazy when you try to figure it out because... I don't know about you guys, but when I watch somebody's video, I think I got it down, and then I don't go back to rewatch it to make sure I did it right. So, um, I discovered that the ends right here, see the end parts? They fold in towards the middle, and then you are left with the back square, the one you glued everything on. And when you try to fold it up, you're like, well, I'm not really sure which way this goes. And I tried it with them up. It, and it doesn't work, and honestly, I did not go back to watch the video to, you know, it's sort of like reading the directions after you can't do something. So after about two hours of fumbling around with it, I figured out these silly things have to fold down in order to make it work. So again, the top two ones, like Carla said, fold in to themselves. The back one folds into itself and it closes. So that's in it in a nutshell. It's three little sheets of paper. And I did use um, I think I used scrapbook paper, scrap scrapbook paper that I had, and that's what I got. Kinda like it. And push may come to shove and I might cover it all up and use it anyway. I just don't know. But that was how all this mess started was this one little one right here. 
So, my project is this one right here that I wanted to do the flip through. Let me change that. I'm sorry. I'm still, oh, that's better. I'm still fooling around with the lights. I have two lights on the desk and then four overhead lights from the ceiling fan with the umbrella hanging down off of it. Is that it? Nope. And so it's a little weird with the lighting still. I don't know how to make it perfect, but I'm working on it. Okay, so um, this is the book and I keep it shut because it does tend to expand and contract. So I keep the rubber, those, uh, you know, those ponytail holders that you can get like a bazillion in a bag for a buck at Dollar Tree. That's what this is. Just nothing exciting. You could do a belly band for it if you wanted to. And I'm actually thinking about going back and doing a belly band for it. For those of you who don't know what a belly band is, it's just, well, my belly bands, let's put it that way. It just take a scrap piece of uh, paper that's probably half an inch wide. And I wrap it around the book and glue it or I use tape on it and then kind of not make it make it snug but not so tight you can't slide it off and what you do is you slide the belly band on and off of it and it's like it's like a belt for your book and um, I put that on there to keep them shut because I don't like it when they come undone because they're on a bookshelf and if they come undone then that means less books I get to store the fatter they are the less room I have all right so this is my this is the uh, this is the front. This is the front of the book. So when you open it, here's my book. And the book is made out of a piece of beige cardstock. Let me see if I can find the zoom. And what I did was is I I made the I made the initial uh, book itself, you know, so it would open and close. And then I took scrapbook paper and actually the, uh, truly these are pieces of scrapbook paper that are in my scrap pile and I cut them oh sorry I cut them the two and a half inch square that will kind of go on the inside but you would see some of the cardstock around the edges and I just cut them in two and a half inch squares now the ones that were cut on the diagonal are the ones that fit the ones that fold I didn't want my paper to go across there because Anybody who's do, do, done books or done paper over something that bends or folds knows that eventually it's going to crack from wear and tear. If you open it and close it enough time, you're going to see a cracking in the paper. And I didn't want that. So to prevent that from happening, like past experiences have proven to be true, I went ahead and cut, after I cut the squares, I put them on the diagonal on the paper cutter and I cut them so that... I would have two separate pieces so that, you know, they fold and then there's no, no problems with the fold. You could put a solid piece of paper on there and crease it and do all that, but honestly, I look for the quickest, easiest way to get the same results, and that's what I came up with. All right, so I, in order to, in order, oops, let's do this. There we go. I wanted to show you all the squares. All the squares are made from pieces of scrapbook paper. They are made from pieces or pictures that are very small that I got out of the backs of uh, magazines like uh, Stampington Magazines, Country Sampler, um, a jewelry catalog from James Avery, anything like that that has small photographs in it. I cut them and I put them into a little container and I save them. I categorize, categorize my... Um, my pictures as small, medium, and oh my gosh, it's not going to fit. So I have a 12 by 12 plastic case you can buy any craft store that has the oh my gosh, it's not going to fit size. And then I have um, smaller containers for the small pictures and the medium pictures. When I do a project, any, any picture that I think is going to be for that project, I will put along with the project in a clear envelope or a Ziploc bag so that I my images are there together. I don't have like tons of images spread everywhere. I just kind of keep them all contained in two or three places and that's about it. I don't really have that many images. I'm not a very good harvester evidently. All right, so this first one is a magazine of a, it looks like um, one of those oil lanterns, but it's a, a lamp with a couch that I cut out of a magazine and I like the way it looked. Everything in here is kind of beigey and brown. I intended that on purpose. So 
This the back piece is leftover embossed paper, and this is just a little punch thing that came with a kit that I got it Tuesday morning. And I like sunflowers, and I thought I would add a little punch of color to it. Right, the next one. Uh, let's see. Let me back this out a little bit so you can see it. Let me see. Okay, guys, I don't want to make anybody dizzy or go crazy, but I'm hoping I. There we go. This is. Um, a rug, a rag rug that was cut out of the back of Country Sa Sampler magazine. Magazine. I have a blue one here, and on the other side, there's a red one. But they're just examples of magazines. I mean, uh, rag rugs that came out of a magazine catalog. Next is a clock that is shaped like a heart, and the little house that came out of the back of I think it was either Prim's magazine or Art Journaling magazine. And I really like the little one, the little little images. They just fit everywhere. They're great little accent pieces, and then they're great pieces for something that's small like this. Again, just put the paper down that was cut in half, glued it with my glue stick, call it a day, it's done. This one is a leather art journaling book that was an advertisement, in, like I said, in the back of an art magazine. This is... Um, let me think, what do you call this? This is from a digital printout off of Etsy, and there was something else, a picture of a coffee cup on this piece of paper, and it had very tiny newsprint, and it and I printed it off on dark brown paper, and it looks like old print, but it's just the fact that I printed it off on craft, craft paper, and so it makes it look really old. So I put that as a background for there so that it would make the book stand out a little bit more. I really like that, and I like that leather journal too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so this one was from, uh, what's the name of that quilting magazine? Counting Threads or something Threads magazine? Connecting Threads? Maybe it's Connecting Threads. Magazine, it's a quilting supply magazine, and I cut the threads, the pictures of the spools of threads out of there, and that's what that is. Like I said, you find tiny images in everything. This is a piece of painting paper that was left over. It was like a really long piece of painting paper and I cut a very tiny piece of it off. Let me see that. I can give you some idea how small it is. Oh, let's see, what does this say? It is one and a quarter inches long. So it is very small. And I put the paper behind it because I thought that the this with the little um, brown and orange speckled material there need a little more help because it would get kind of lost in yet, you know, more speckly paper. So that's why I put the color underneath it. My middle section is, middle section is pretty simple too. It's just a clock, an antique clock that was sitting on an end table in a magazine, some kind of a home magazine. And I like the clock, so I cut it off the table it was sitting on. I think it was next to a couch. All right, this is just text out of uh, some kind of a paperback book. Like the way it looked together. Looks very scholarly. All right, this square, um, this piece of jewelry, I think, either came from the back of a art journaling magazine or from a James Avery jewelry catalog. James Avery has a lot of silver jewelry. Not a lot of gold, but a lot of silver. And I like that kind of jewelry, and so I think that's where this one might have come from. And then I put some white text there. I was looking at it earlier when I tried to record this three other times today, and I got to look at it, and I thought, you know what? If I hadn't put the paper on there, this piece would have been just fine all alone. I really didn't need anything on the bottom. As a matter of fact, I think it probably would have looked better had I not put that little piece of paper there. The next one is a fish. Uh, this came out of Prim's magazine, I think, because it's it's dead. It has a little X over its little eyeball, and its mouth's kind of funky looking. Um, I put the paper behind it because I thought it would help. You know, I thought it would help the fish stick out, and I don't same concept as this one. I don't think the paper behind it really necessarily helped it that much. But, you know, you always think you're doing the right thing until after it's over and you look at it and you go, oh, well, no, maybe not. This one, I like pears. I love pictures of pears. I have no idea why. I just like pears. I like eating them. I like pictures of them. 
and so every time I see a pair, I have to cut it out. Um, there's just text, the same text that came off of this piece is right here. And just glue the pair right over it. This one right here is a stamp. I have a stamp set of like little tiny mushrooms, and this was for another project that did not work out. And I had already colored it, so I thought, well, it's already cut out. I might as well save it. Maybe someday I'll find something that'll go it'll go with. And sure enough, there it is right there. And this is a very teeny piece of little painty paper, red painty paper underneath it, just to give it a little boost on the bottom so it really doesn't look like it's floating too much. This one here, I'm going to show you my mistake. See how everything else is up and down, vertical? Well, mostly vertical. It's a fish. Um, this one right here, though, is a rectangle that probably should have been balanced more along this line here. So, because see, this is the way it would look if I had glued it you know, not cockeyed. Um, so I took a little bit of painting paper and obviously it's not quite enough, but it's just enough that the pink from this painting paper kind of bounces off this little pink flower here in the corner. I wish I'd have glued it a little more off here. You know, live and learn. That's the nice thing about a little project as I'm not heartbroken. I didn't spend five hours doing it and make a huge mistake. It's a little mistake that I will not repeat again. So, lesson learned. All right, this one is a vase with painting paper. On the other side, there's a fish. And I thought because he was more gray than he was brown, that he would stand out in this all on his own. It's cute. And it doesn't matter how you look at him. He still is kind of cute no matter what direction. But this, this needed to be the right direction. See there. All right, last half page. This is cardstock with the alphabet. It looks like wood blocks that I cut out, and then I put the companion to the other one, uh, the other sunflower on here. These are two of my most favorite things. My favorite color is green, and my favorite flowers are sunflowers. So it had to go on there. Again, there's another pair with newsprint. Well, I mean, a uh, book print. And he is, you know, more up and down more vertical looks better again made the same mistake with this seed the two mistakes are right here together <laughs> this one's also i wish i realized that this one needed to be turned differently after i had done this one but i sat there for a few minutes and thought about it and by the time i changed my mind and went to twist it <gasps> too late it was glued this is painty paper that i use specifically because of the blue behind the lamb I thought that would give it a little more interest. So this one was delayed. This one was a mistake. This one was almost going to get corrected. And then pfft, I blew it. <laughs> okay, so if you notice, when I close it up, everything will be upright. Okay, and then I unfold it. And when I made the book like with everything up and down this way, I made it this way specifically so that when I could, when I turn it, everything would be up and down on the other side. I like making meander books, the construction of meander books, but I hate trying to figure out which way's up and down. I'm not one of those people that, I'm, I'm not big on puzzly type things. And so if I had to sit down and really think about it and try to figure it out, I don't like it. That's why Rubik's Cube was never in my hands. <laughs> All right, so this side and this side, both, this side has a picture on it and this one has a picture on it, but they're actually pieces of cardboard that are covered in um, scrapbook paper to give the book a little more girth. And I really like it because it adds a little weight to it when you go to, when you go to close it. it. I think it's much better if you put a cover on it. it. It moves with a lot more ease. All right, so here we have a little potato and I put the round uh, painty paper underneath him because if you notice he would just kind of blend almost into the back of this paper so I didn't put him with a little color this one is another one of those dead fish and because I use the key paper 
on a lot of these. I did try to put stuff behind them on the ones that I didn't think could stand on their own or would get lost in the key paper. So this one has a little bit of blue underneath him so you can see the fish. If I had just put him on the key, key paper, he would have gotten lost in the print. This one is just a vase. It came off of a table, side table in a magazine where they did a picture of a living room. That's all that is. This is a clay pot. I can't remember where I got it from. Maybe somebody sent it to me. Anyway, so just a little newsprint to offset it because I thought it might need just a little breaking up of the keys around it. So I put the newsprint there or the book print there and then put the little clay pot. This one is the companion to the other mushroom on the other side. It didn't, it, because the background's kind of plain, I just put the mushroom on there and it was good to go. Again, it's just a stamp that I colored and the project didn't work out. I saved it because I'd put so much effort into it already. I didn't want to get rid of it. So I saved it for a rainy day and there you go. There's the um, red to the blue rag rug that I showed on the other side. It didn't need anything because the red star, it did not get lost in the key print. This one, on the other hand, and I like these three leaves, but I think it got a little bit lost in the keys. For some reason, it doesn't seem to stand out. Even though it has color, it doesn't seem to stand out the way I had hoped. But it's done. This is a clock. A, um, my parents had clocks like these a lot when I was a little kid. I can't remember where I got this picture from. It might have been the background in some kind of a setting for a, a like, I think Family Circle magazine where they did a living room and I cut this off the wall out of the living room. Then I took um, some brown paper and put it on the bottom. And the reason I put the brown paper there is, again, the key print on here, I think was a little overwhelming for that clock. Plus, if you look at the clock, you look at the paper, then you go up to the face of the clock. I really did give this one some thought. Eh. This one, on the other hand, again, it's not quite as straight as I thought I had it when I made it because I wanted it to be straight across like that. And I went to adjust it after I glued it to make sure it was that direction and I let too much time lapse. And it's not, see I had to turn this. It's not as straight as I would like it to be. Put the blue underneath it just because I thought it needed a little bit underneath it because of the key pattern. This one, I really like this one. Let me take you further in. Let's see if it'll focus. Come on, I know you can do it. Nope, you can't. Now you can. All right, this is somebody's doodle handiwork, and I don't remember where I got this from. What they did is they doodled three different hearts, I mean four different hearts, put the, the points all together. They made a flower, and then they glued the flower on top of the hearts, and then they took the photograph. So it makes it look like it, it's all one piece. I don't think it started out being all one piece. I think it was five different pieces, the four hearts and then the flower. But I liked it because I'm a doodler and so I like the doodly look. This is paper I used on the other side. I ripped the paper off from the little piece I used there. This is the large piece it was ripped off of, the um, embossed paper, and put it on here. Hey, to waste it, put it on here. I went, eh, it'll be fine. back down again just a wee bit all right this one is another one of those like potato things put the color paper around it need a little oomph now see the birdies on this one they're straight but you can barely see that there's a bird's beak there I cut it out and in the original picture the birds are separated from each other and there's this light blue um, they're sitting on like a light blue ledge and I cut the ledge off threw it away and then too late decided that I should have probably put some of that blue paper behind the head and the beak of the bird so it sticks out more. It looks good down here but they need a little help up here but at least they're up and down. Great. This one is a butterfly with polka dot and scrapbook paper. There's no explanation for this one. I just like the polka dot of paper like the butterfly. It's done. This one is a, a magazine. It's called Art Doll Magazine and I think this is a Stamping and Company Com Stampington and Company publication. I got it from the back of one of the prim magazines that I have and in the very back they have tons of their publications like samples of what the magazines will look like. They go on sale or the next coming issue what the cover will look like. 
they are great things to cut out to use as little things, uh, little tiny pictures in small things like this. And I liked it. She's made, I think she's made like a pantyhose head. She has a smash flat face, which kind of looks like a, a pumpkin. But I just thought she was cute. Even though she was super ugly, she was cute. You know, sort of like a pug. They're kind of ugly, but they're kind of cute. <laughs> I have smash face dogs. I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> All right, so there is the whole book. There is the whole book. So again, I did this one right side up and did it that way on purpose so that when I flipped it over, these would be the right size so I didn't have to guess and turn it around and try to figure it out. I'm just not that kind of person who wants to be challenged that way. So I fold it up, put it here like this. And one trick that I've, I decided to do, now I don't have a belly band on this and a belly band would be a great help for this. But So what I do is, so I know which is right side up is I put my band on here this way. So I know because when you read, you, well, when we read English here in the United States, we read from left to right. And so I know that this is the right side up by leaving it like this. If I flipped it over, I don't know, would it be that way? No, it'll be upside down. So that's why I did it this way, is so my pictures will be right side up. If I put a belly band, it would be much easier, but this little band for now works for me, so I know, whoops, I know which side is up and which side is down. So I put it on here like this, because when I put it on the bookcase, it's going in the bookcase this way, and I know that that, that is the writing that's going to, because I take it out and do it like this. So... I know it seems like an odd little way to do it. I'm sure you guys will have other ways to tell me how to figure it out. And really the best way to do it, to know what's up and down, is to do a belly band. And I might put a belly band on there because I have a stamp set that has got keys on it. So I could put some kind of a belly band that has a key that sticks up and down on it. So I know which is up and which is down. I think that would be pretty cool. We'll see. Anyway, so that's my flip through of the smash book or map book as Carla called it. Um, I will link some place on the video. You know how that goes. Um, her, the link to her live stream, I'm hope, I think, I don't think she has a separate video yet of just the smash book. I'm hoping she will though, but it's on her live stream, how to make this little book. And I will link that so that you can see how it's done and not be a doofus like I was and not go back and revisit it. So there's my first video. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Thank you.